Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I'd like to discuss something that's a little weird. Um, I've played with it before. I don't think I've ever recalled anyone else discussing it, but I think it's worth giving a few moments thought to. Now, if you've spent a lot of time profiling your C++ code, it's entirely possible that you end up at some point going, wow, like most of our time is spent in unnecessary string copies or something, you know, just unexpected like that. Because sometimes copying data is absolutely the right thing to do. Oftentimes when we are passing an object into a thread, you know, passing that by copy is just brilliant because then we don't have to worry about shared state between threads, which is extraordinarily difficult to reason about. And sometimes if we have small objects like standard string view, passing that by copy is definitely the right thing to do because that is the size of two pointers that's going to get packed into to registers on modern 64-bit calling conventions, and that's way more efficient than pushing something onto the stack or doing a pointer in direction with a reference or whatever. So oftentimes copying is the right thing to do. Sometimes we have types that are really expensive to copy, and we don't want them to be copied all over the place accidentally and cause a huge performance impact. So how can we detect that? And if you saw the title of this video, you probably already have an idea at this, but let's just, you know, let's just play with this. So I'm going to create this function. It's going to take an object of type s by value. This is all that it is going to do. I need to put this down here so I don't have to worry about forward declaring it. And I'm going to create my local object of type s and I'm going to call func with s now then compiler explorer we're going to see all this basically just you know go away oh well it does have to set up the stack pointer it has to xor out eax because we are calling a function that it doesn't know anything about the definition of so there's a lot of optimizations here it can't do because it can't inline and it doesn't know anything about what the function does that's fine for our purposes now this right here is a uh, copy and this is going to work silently. This is intentional in C++. I am going to remove this run the compiled output thing here just so we get some noise off of the screen. Now let's say that this thing is not trivially copyable, but we've got, I don't know, some sort of, let's actually, let's do it like this. I can do it like this. I can forward declare the copy constructor uh, and then I need to give it a default constructor, otherwise line 14 down here can't compile. Okay, so this copy constructor is something that we don't know anything about. It's completely opaque. It could be extremely expensive. Maybe it allocates 20 gigabytes. I don't know why, but it does something. Again, this code compiles. This is an explicit copy, and we can actually see this explicit copy happening in line 5 in the disassembly here. Now, if I wanted to see where and how often this object is copied, I can actually make my copy constructor explicit. Now this code doesn't compile because I've got no matching function call to the copy constructor down here. This is expects, um, yeah, so it's trying to call a different it's trying to call a non-const copy constructor it's a very strange warning that it's giving us so this is this is going to be unfortunate but if i do this then this code's going to compile again because it's calling the copy it's a, a version of the copy constructor that it can match against that has a non-const reference so this is explicit it can't call this but I can explicitly make a call to the copy constructor here. Now this makes the whole thing explicit. Now I know that I'm making a copy of this thing in. Now if you've taken any of my classes or watched a lot of my videos, one of the things that I'll say is that you should avoid naming 
things, temporary objects like this. Like why, why did I create this object here just to copy it? I could move it in like this, but I need to include the utility header. And now it doesn't know what to call because by putting in my own copy constructor, I have hidden my move constructor. So I can do this. I can pass this thing in by move. Or I can just create one of these right here where it's being called, and that's going to compile just fine. So this one is the one that's calling the move constructor. It knows the move constructor does nothing. If I remove this equals default and say that I'm forward declaring it, which is likely what's going to happen in a complex class that is doing resource management in some way, then I can do this. And then I see this call right here, which is taking the thing that has been default constructed. So yeah. Uh, it's an interesting tool. Is it something that you should sprinkle around your code? Probably not. It's certainly something you can. I mean, we could, we could take this to the next level and say, we don't want, like, this thing is still copyable and movable, but we want to make sure that that's what the user is expecting to do. Interesting possibilities. Um, something to think about. Don't blame me if you do it and your coworkers complain. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you enjoyed it. Learn something new.